Developeress. Hello, senor developers and senoras developeresses. I'm sorry if this looks like the IKEA ready to hang print review channel. I didn't want this, but I wanted to film on the couch, but unfortunately my couch sucks. Then I thought about filming in front of the wall where this was hanging, but unfortunately the lighting sucks there. So I just took the best part off the wall and then just covered the couch. And I'm trying not to move right now because if I move, we're going to hear all kinds of sounds. So bear with me. The purpose of this video is to talk to you a bit about the importance of process. Probably your managers have already stuffed your head with why process is important and blah, 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 but they're usually biased towards the process that your organization is currently using. The idea is that we should stop being fancy. I'm veering off the script a bit for a moment now, but we should just stop acting like a bunch of artists in pain and in a severe depression. Please, just stop it. Leave Brittany alone! Please! So the topic of this video is process. I will prove to you how important process is and how no real work can be done without a good process in place. I need you to bear with me as I try to make analogies with fields such as painting, cinematography, and even automotive to prove my point. Let's get to it. Most of the software developers I meet hate process. Like they despise it. And why is that? Well, they somehow ended up believing that process equals meetings. Come to think of it, I was one of those developers. I hated everything about process. I would cringe at hearing the word process and the word meeting. It felt like there were certain people in the company who just loved to talk about doing things rather than doing things. Allow me to illustrate. Let's say you're following a process that requires the team to meet every morning and talk about what they did the previous day, what they're planning on doing today, and if they have any blockers. <coughs> Scrum. If you force the team into doing this when the team has only four people and they're doing pair programming and they're also co-located, well, you'll just end up with four little frustrated developers. Why is that? Well, isn't it obvious that they're already in sync because they're doing pair programming and they're co-located, like kinda in the same space, in the same room? Maybe having the sync meeting once every two days or have it like a midweek checkpoint or have it on Monday and Wednesday. So you have a beginning of the week sync up and a midweek checkpoint where the two sub teams synchronize and find out what the other sub team is doing that would be better so i hope i got this point across it's not the process that's bad it's usually how it's being applied most of the processes we're applying in software development today and i say most not all are not that rigid they allow you to bring in more stuff to eliminate certain parts that don't fit the way your team or organization is configured. Why apply it by the book? When I used to work in companies, I found one of two situations. We either had the wrong process and we were applying it by the book, doing the wrong thing right, right? Or we had the right process, but we were applying it wrong. Daily meetings for four member teams that do pair programming and are co-located. I know, I know, I said something about painting and cinematography and automotive, so let's move on to the analogy section. Let's take a look at Pablo Picasso, for example. If you look at the bull, it looks more like some squiggly lines my daughter would draw. It has random written all over it. Look at it, just look at it. Look at me, look at me. Well, not quite, because when you learn that the bull is actually a series of lithographs. So I'm veering off the script again. I will give a beer to any person who can tell me what a lithograph is 
without looking it up on Google. I know it has something to do with stones and drawing, but that's just as far as my intelligence goes. The idea is that Picasso took the best representation of a bull that he could muster, and that thing looks pretty real to me, and went on to decompose it to its essence. Oh, so that's how we got to those squiggly lines. So see how in a field so dominated by randomness and artist whims, one of its top performers shows some pretty damn strong process. Onwards to cinematography. Go ahead and search YouTube for anything by Stanley Kubrick or Michelangelo Antonioni. Or if you're too lazy, check the links in the description. Observe how these masters of composition use principles such as symmetry to create balance on one hand or randomness on the other hand in their shots. If you take a look at how Antonioni frames his characters through doors, windows, or even wired fences, if that's not process and hard work, then I don't know what is. So on one end of the spectrum, we have people like Picasso, Antonioni, or Kubrick showing some pretty strong process, and on the other end of the spectrum, we have people like John DeLorean. By the way, full disclosure, irony aside, to all my Romanian fellows, I just found out that John DeLorean is of Romanian descent. His father's name was Zaharia DeLorean. Maybe that's the reason he hated process so much. Anyway, John DeLorean was a man ahead of its time. Just by taking a look at the Pontiac GTO specifications, or the DMC for that matter, and you realize that he was way out of his league. But DeLorean had his most prolific years while working under the established process of General Motors, while following GM leadership. As soon as he got to deliver stuff under his leadership, like the Chevrolet Nova, for example, then the division that he was leading delivered the car late. Full disclosure, I know this off of Wikipedia because I researched it, so if Wikipedia is lying, then I am lying to you, but I read a couple of books mentioning DeLorean, and they would all revolve around the idea that DeLorean was a man who hated process. This is probably the reason why when he went off from General Motors to found his own company, the DMC, the DeLorean Motor Company. He had his executives and creatives run around after any crazy idea that would pop into his head. He would have them chase any crazy idea that they would get. And this is probably why DeLorean Motor Company isn't selling any cars today. None outside auctions, at least. So this is what the lack of process and good leadership can do to a company that had all the premises for success. So to recap, process is very important and you can find it even in fields totally dominated, like I said, by randomness. To be a top performer, you need to have process and you need to follow it thoroughly. Take this last part with a grain of salt because although you should follow your process thoroughly, you should always be scrutinizing it and try to eliminate as much as possible. There's a saying in design that comes from Albert Einstein, I think, but it was adapted to the field that goes something like this. You know you have a good design when there's nothing else you can take away from it. So the same holds true for process. You know you have a good process when you don't have anything else you can eliminate from it. So this applies to organizations, big and small, and even solo consultants. I would even go as far as to say that if you're a solo consultant, it's even more important. You have to get clients, get projects, deliver projects, market yourself, stay relevant. You know, you're a one-man band. Okay, we're done here. 
Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you took the time to watch this video to the end. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, all that YouTube cliche. I am at Oprah Rocks on almost everything. So feel free to follow me on Twitter, Medium, Instagram, Snapchat. Catch you in the next video. Oh, and by the way, by the time I will post the next video with my mug, I promise that I will have a name for this show. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Bye.